Hey folks, Matthew here from FiberglassSupply.com. In the last video, we took the CX500 motorcycle side cover and we mounted it to a piece of melamine and coated it with a release agent in preparation to make a mold. In this video, we're gonna make that mold. So we'll start out by spraying a gel coat and then building up behind that with fiberglass and putting a wood frame around it so that it'll sit on the table flat and we can work out of it. So let's get in there and build the mold. Remember, we've prepared this mold ahead of time. We applied uh, wax and PVA to it, so it has a mold release applied to it. But Tim's mixing up the gel coat here with uh, MEKP Catalyst, and we're gonna spray that using the G100 gel coat gun. This is just a dump and shoot gun. There's no needle in it or anything like that. Uh, you can see the gel coat's atomizing really well, and that helps get a nice, even surface. The back side of the gel coat that you're going to see here is going to have a slight orange peel texture to it. It won't flow out like a paint, but you do want that as smooth as possible and as even uh, as possible. And that will make it easier to laminate onto. One of the things with gel coat is you do want to get it on thick enough. Uh, it really should be right around 20 thousandths of an inch thick and we use a mill gauge typically to check that um, it's just a little gauge you stick in the gel coat and it tells you how much you've got on there so again as you can see there's a little bit of orange peel texture on there that's completely normal for gel coat um, what's important is the other side and there's no big bumps or drips or anything like that um, on that part so now uh, we're going to let that cure up it usually should be ready to go about an hour and a half after you've applied the gel coat uh, but once it's tacky to the touch and doesn't come back up on your glove finger uh, it's ready to go you can often leave it overnight too so the first thing that Tim's going to do uh, after the gel coat's cured is he's applying a layer of Sevel uh, to the mold or to the gel coat that, that will be that bond between the gel coat surface and the rest of the mold. What that does is it gets you some fiber right up against the mold. The Sevel wets out really easily and provides a good interface between uh, the mold and, or between the gel coat and the rest of the mold. What happens if you don't use Sevel or you're not real good with your first layer of laminate? is that you'll have resin rich areas and those areas really don't have any strength in them. Um, and especially in corners, uh, outside corners, what will happen is you get stress in those areas and if there's not fiber backing that up, it'll chip and crack, uh, kind of like glass actually. Um, so if you see a mold that's got chips or flakes out of it and, and it looks like chipped glass, there wasn't enough fiber backing up that area and it was all just gel coat and or resin. So the Seavel lets out nicely. You can see he's just going to work this and he'll get those wrinkles out. It's a super thin layer and once that is done he'll begin building the laminate behind that. Um, the next layer that he's going to apply is going to be a layer of ounce and a half chop strand mat. You can use three quarter ounce or ounce and a half. We tend to use ounce and a half here. It builds faster um, and it is a nice balance between building quickly and not too thick that it's hard to work with. One of the nice things about working with chop strand mat is you can just tear it. So you see here he's tearing that and those areas will feather together. You don't get a hard edge. Um, the hard edges tend to trap bubbles and, and create issues in that way. On most projects we use a paint roller to wet out the chop strand mat, but on a project this size a paintbrush is adequate. Um, Tim has been doing this for decades uh, and he's pretty adept at not pulling up the fibers with his paintbrush. If you're trying it and you're having challenges pulling up fibers with a paintbrush, uh, you can switch to a paint roller um, or try using a little less pressure. Chop strand generally is going to use twice its weight in resin, uh, so you're going to put quite a bit of resin on the chop mat. Um, one of the nice things about it though is it, it expands a little bit 
once it gets wet out and that's what allows you to build thickness uh, faster than, than if it was a fabric. Again, it's important in these first few layers to really get the bubbles out and get as perfect as a laminate as possible. Uh, those first few layers are what take the majority of the abuse and the stress as the molds being used. And so by paying attention to detail and getting all the bubbles out, uh, your mold will last longer. It will be uh, more maintenance free. So Tim's worked out the details on the body there and now he's just going to go around and wet out the, uh, the flange area. Uh, he's noticing that he didn't cut the fabric right and he's got a little spot out there on the edge of the mold that doesn't have any fabric. Uh, what he'll do is he'll just cut a little triangular piece to match that and drop that in place. Uh, so it's really no big deal. On this particular mold uh, we're going to apply it six layers of chop strand mat and so if there is a seam or something like that uh, it, again it's not a big deal because that's going to get covered up and you can see right there you just cut that little wedge to wet that out and and on we go so no big deal at all uh, again uh, once he's got that wet out he's going to come back with a bubble roller and roll that flange area out on this particular mold, he did this layer and then let it cure. Um, after that, he did two layers at a time. I'll often do two to three layers at a time uh, after my first couple layers. And it's just kind of up to your comfort level um, and, and your skill level at doing that. Just clean up his tools. Uh, work cleanly it makes things much more efficient and so here he is green trimming uh, and we have another little video on green trimming and simply he's waited for that resin to get to cheddar cheese state and is cutting off nice and cleanly with the utility knife that'll make finishing the mold much easier it makes demolding the mold much easier because you don't have droopy fiberglass fabric that is hardened uh, into some crazy shape at the end of your project that you've got to cut through. Uh, by green trimming, he simply can come back later and, and sand the edges of those molds, uh, or sand the edges of the mold real quick. And it's nice and easy. So again, at this stage, he's going to apply two layers, wet on wet. So you apply the first layer. Uh, Tim likes to actually wet them both out and then bubble roll them together. I like to wet one layer out, bubble roll it, and then put the next layer on, wet it out, and bubble roll it, but wet on wet. Uh, two to three you can actually do at a time that way. The reason you don't do more is because the resin will get too hot as it cures, the laminate will get too hot. And when it does that, it shrinks and warps and pulls away. Uh, and it, in really bad cases, it actually gets bubbles in it. Um, we're not going to show you putting all six layers on here, obviously. Uh, but we've jumped now to uh, the last layers that we got on. And now Tim is putting the wood frame around it. The wood frame is really just there so we can set it on table and not have it rock around. Uh, nice simple frame, just use a little bit of chop mat to bond that frame to the mold. And again here he is green trimming these final couple of layers. Uh, as you can see we wait it maybe a little longer uh, than it would be prime and it's taking a little more effort to do that. Uh, but, but since he's done that through the whole process, it's nice and easy uh, to finish this mold off um, with just a few seconds of grinding uh, here in a minute. So here we've got that outside after everything's cured overnight and he's just hitting out with the grinder real quick and cleaning it up. Uh, super easy, uh, it only took really a couple minutes to clean that up. Didn't have to get out a fancy saw, didn't have to do anything um, drastic to clean that up. Much less dust than if we were cutting through the fiberglass itself. So. And now is the moment of truth. Uh, we get back in the shop here and we're going to get some demolding wedges under this and pop it up. 
So this often happens uh, when you're doing plug and mold work where you have a plug that is a certain shape uh, and it's bonded to a board. It Oftentimes the plug is going to come up uh, with, with the mold and we'll, we'll have to get that out. What we're showing you there though, that green film, that's the PVA that we applied in the previous video. You can see it's a nice thick film and so it comes off in sheets and that's really what you want. So the part here is being a little difficult to get out. That's actually pretty normal. Uh, so we're using a little compressed air and some judicious force and uh, we've gotten it out. Uh, there's a few things to clean up before we're ready to move this into production. Uh, Tim's going to wet sand those edges and just kind of round them over a little bit. There were also some other small imperfections in the cavity there that he cleaned up, uh, wet sanded out to 800 and now we're buffing those out. Uh, we tried generally, uh, this part we knew we weren't going to get a class A finish on, but we do generally try to get as good a finish as we can without having to go in and do rework. So that was the mold building process right there. We started with our prepared plug that had a release agent on it. We then sprayed down the gel coat and added multiple layers of chop strand mat and iso tooling resin behind that. We did those in stages so that as the resin cured it wouldn't shrink too much and pull the mold away from the plug. So we've got a really good duplication of the geometry of the part. Next, we'll release the mold and we'll go into building some parts. So we'll start by building a carbon fiber side cover using resin infusion. Stay tuned and that video will be coming out shortly. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to get a hold of us at fiberglasssupply.com or leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.